Hello, welcome to Christina's Knitting Catch-Up episode 28. Today is Sunday the 21st of February 2016 and uh, it's a bit of a cloudy day here in Canberra and I'm recording from my bedroom today just because there's a lot of stuff going on in our house and uh, it's quiet up here so I'm doing this. Um, I haven't recorded in two weeks now um, because a lot has happened and I've been pretty sick. You can hear I'm still sick. Um, but here we are. I've done a lot of knitting so I'm looking forward to telling you all about it. So you can find me on Ravelry as Chrissa. That's C-H-R-I-S-S-A-A-H and um, Cutiful Christina on Instagram and I have a Etsy shop called Cutiful Yarns where I sell some hand dyed stuff. <laughs> okay, so at the moment in my Ravelry group, which you can find as uh, Christina's Knitting Catch Up, I'm hosting a knit along, which is our deep stash knit along, where the requirement is to knit with uh, some yarn that is over six months old. And uh, we've got a few finished objects already in the thread and the knit along goes until the 15th of March and uh, I realized I've left my finished object over there but let me show you one of the new prizes. Uh, this was a prize kindly no donated by Katie from Knit and Stitch Bits which is an Etsy shop that sells project bags and other type of goods. Here's her card. Knit and Stitch Bits, Katie. And uh, she sent as a prize for this knit along this lovely project bag, which has a zip here. It's got her little tag. And it's lined with some cool spotty fabric, and it's just a lovely size for uh, probably you could fit some socks, uh, a hat, maybe a shawl in here lovely medium-sized project bag and she also sent with it a keychain that says yarn on there so I thought I'd offer these as a sort of prize pack so if you enter a finished object into the thread um, you'll be in the draw to win this and also some other stuff from me um, yeah it looks to be a lot of fun I thought I'd also offer as a prize my pack of mini skeins. Sorry, you can't see it all that well. I might turn this so that I'm more in the light. <clears throat> and I hand dyed these mini skeins and they're available in my shop as well if you want to get them. Uh, yeah, so that's that's our knit along that's happening right now. So just hold on one second, I'll get So up. I have a finished object and it's this hat and oh the brim doesn't want to stay up. It stays up when it's on my head but um, it's a floppy kind of yarn. This is my hat. It, <laughs> it is knit out of Barocco Folio yarn, one skein. I only had a tiny bit left over. I could have used the whole lot but I got sick of it. Um, which is, it's supposed to be a DK weight yarn, but it's really more like a fingering. It's very thin and um, floppy. So I knit this hat top down, started at the top and knit down. I just um, made it up as I went along, essentially, and uh, stopped when I thought it was long enough. And the pom-pom is made out of one mini skein by Tumuk Valley Yarns, which I've had in the stash for a while. So I bought this yarn, this blue yarn, over a year ago when I went to Chicago in 2014. I was really sick at that stage um, with my appendix, but anyway, I got this yarn and it feels pretty nice. I thought it might be too thin, but it's not. It's really pretty good. Um, yeah, so that's my finished object for my knit-along. 
I might do some other stuff, but we'll see how we go. I've got a few things to finish before I can cast on anything else new. Uh, I have my um, wheat bag, which has been warmed up, and it's just nice, styled against my poor face. Uh, so, work's in progress. I've got three to show you. The first is this jumper that's inside out for my husband. So here it is so far. Sorry, it's a bit hard to see. I could try it on, that might help. But as you can see here, I've done one side of the front and I've done the back and um, now the other side of the front needs to be knit up. It's a v-neck as you can see from that and the, I'll just turn up the brightness on my laptop see if I can get some more light here. There we are. Um, and as you can see the top part is all moss stitch. So the instructions have you knit the back, then bind off, and then knit up the front, and then bind off, and then seam the shoulders together. But instead I did a three needle bind off. I'm not that happy with the seam, it's very obvious, so I might undo that bind off and, and kitchener stitch it instead, which I think has a more invisible seam. Um, yeah, so I think I'll get the other side of the front done today and um, then I'll be able to start on the sleeves. I actually had a massive knitting attack with this. As you may know if you follow me on Instagram, I mentioned it there. Let me show you the back as well. There's the back. You can see the moss stitch is lovely. I'd, um, I was up to about, I don't know, here or somewhere along there and I just happened to measure it measured from the bottom up to the armhole and I realized it ha it was too short before the armhole and I don't know how I did that because I measured it before I divided for the sleeves but um, yeah it was too short by about seven centimeters so I had to rip all the way back down to the stocking stitch and knit up another seven centimeters and then start the moss stitch again and it was very annoying and this was one of the days this week when I was stuck in bed um, home from work it's been a rough week <laughs> but that was a pretty nasty knitting attack now my husband's birthday is on the 2nd of March which is coming up in like less than two weeks or something luckily this month it's a leap year so we've got 29 days this um, month extra day but I don't know if I'm gonna get this done I've got to do the rest of the front which I can do today and two sleeves so a bit concerned about that next thing I've got is um, some socks that I'm knitting for my husband's birthday um, I showed you these last week they're coming along. Still using this lovely um, little holder from Andy. Um, so I'm almost up to the heel, very close. Um, here's my reference sock, which fits him. See, I'm very close to being up to the heel. So, um, yeah. And this is being knit out of two gradients. I haven't actually reached any of the gradient yet in either of the balls. But I'm sure I will before I get to the end of the sock. So that's a bit of fun. Um, and I am trying to keep them secret from my husband. The jumper he knows about. The socks I think he knows about really. But I'm keeping them secret so that he can act surprised when he gets them on his birthday. I can knit socks pretty quickly, but um, I forgot to put this away again. Uh, 
so I'm not worried about getting them done, but I'm quite worried about the jumper. He's going to be 30, so I want to get him, you know, I want to, I want to do something nice. It's a special birthday. Okay, so that's that. And in this bag, this is new this week, uh, last week really, I ordered this from Knit and Stitch Bits, and that's when she threw in this extra bag. So I got the large size one, and it's just a little bit bigger than the other one that one of you will be getting. And these socks I started to knit on the plane when I went to Brisbane last week. And these are um, going to be a present for my yoga teacher. And I've been doing yoga for, um, I did it for the last term of last year and I'm starting it again this term. I couldn't go last week. Um, too sick. Maybe I can't go tomorrow because I'm still really sick. But these are knit out of Knit Picks Felici in the candy jar colorway, I think. And I looked at the balls and one is opposite to the other, so they're going to run opposite directions, which is super annoying. I could wind it off and knit from the other end, but I don't think I care enough. I think she's just going to get striped socks. And she has really small feet, so um, I'm making them a little bit smaller than socks for me. Uh, these would fit me, but only just. <clears throat> and... Uh, I'm doing this because she's just been very kind to me. She's been very helpful to me about my tummy pain that's been persistent since my surgery last year. And um, yeah, she's just been very kind, offering me extra advice and help um, about that. And I, I appreciate it so much. I thought I would give her a prezi. I don't give many people presents. <laughs> just because it takes so long, but um, but that's what I'm doing. Okay, so that's all my knitting, really. I'm really working hard on that jumper to get that done. I love this. Okay, so I just wanted to tell you a little bit about what's in my shop right now. I've sold a few things. Thank you so much for your support. If you've bought things from me, I just, I really appreciate it. Um, I haven't been doing much in the way of putting new products in there, but I, I'm too sick. But um, but I will get back to it, and when I do, um, you'll see a whole lot of new things. I've got a lot of ideas, but at the moment I've only got two big skeins left, and they look similar, but they're a bit different. One is a grey base with green and blue and black spots. And the other is a blue base with blue and black spots. So they're my big skeins. And this is, of course, my mini skein set. And I think I've got four left or five left of these. So go ahead. Um, I'm thinking because these have been sitting around in the shop for a while, I might cut the price and put it a couple of dollars cheaper. Because I just want to sell them and I get rid of them. Okay, so I was going through my bookcase and uh, hoping to get rid of some stuff and I found this lovely book, which I really like, um, that I just don't want anymore. So I thought I would do a little giveaway. So if you want this book, head over to the Ravelry group and um, there will be a thread there. Let me just show you this book a little bit. Um, modern knits vintage style and the idea is they take an old vintage design and modernize it. This is one that I really like. The cherry cardigan. Is that what it's called? Cherry short sleeved cardigan. I nearly made that. I bought the yarn and everything. I swatched. I don't know why I didn't. I think it was because I didn't like the yarn in the end. The other one I really like is this one called the favorite cardigan. I just think that's nice and simple and beautiful. And I think that that also goes by the Pippa cardigan on Ravelry. I found that there. 
and it's got a whole lot of uh, other type jumpers and and um, lots of accessories, poncho, skirt, um, some really interesting things. This is the one that I really like. I really like this capelet. I think that's gorgeous. But anyway, I thought I would give this away because I'm not using it and I thought someone else might like it. So if you go to my Ravelry group, um, you'll find a thread called Modern Knits Vintage Style Giveaway. And I would like you all to answer a prompt, which is, what vintage fashion trend do you think should be brought back? So it could be anything like flares from the 1970s and 60s, or... Um, you know, Elizabethan ruffs. I don't think that that should come back personally, but you know, whatever floats your boat. Uh, what about lovely gloves to be worn whenever you go out? Things like that. I would like to know what you think should be brought back in fashion. Um, and I'll just do a random number generator and I'll pull out a number and someone can have this. And I don't mind where you're from, you can be from overseas or not. And um, yeah, happy to send that anywhere. It's a lovely book, I just am not using it. So if you want it, you can have it. Um, let me think. Um, yeah, I thought I should tell you a little bit about my two weeks. It's been pretty much... A really horrible two weeks for me. Um, as as you know, we had to go to Brisbane for a funeral. That was Friday, not last week, the week before. And we flew to Brisbane, and on the way there and that back, I knitted this sock. Um, I'm not very good with planes. I get very stressed on planes, but. <coughs> But it was nice to have some knitting to do. And I pretty much did all of this on, on the two flights. And I haven't touched it since, just because I've been knitting this uh, jumper furbin feverishly. Um, I think it's really pretty. But something I didn't mention before, and other people have mentioned this on their podcasts, but there's a little bit of colour uh, from the darker stripes appearing on the lighter stripes, so there's a little bit of the pink. Um, you can see there, it just kind of looks a bit muddy. There was a green spot somewhere. Oh yeah, there is a green spot there. It just looks a bit mucky and, and not ideal. I don't know if you can see those very light pink rows. Anyway, I don't mind that much. It's not a huge deal. But um, but I think that's a bit dodge. I don't know how that happened. Like, hmm. Anyway, uh, so I knit those on the, on the planes, which was good. And, uh, yeah, the time in Brisbane was okay, very sad and, and everything, but it was nice to see family. Um... Yeah, I don't want to go into that too much. Um, but anyway, got home on, we, we flew down Thursday afternoon, came back Friday afternoon. So just one day away and went to bed. And Saturday morning, I woke up with this terrible sore throat. And we had to play at the Multicultural Festival that day, as I mentioned last time. And so I had a Panadol, and off I went to, and a Sudafed, I think, as well. And off I went to play Steel Pan at the Multicultural Festival. It was really fun. It was ex extremely hot, though. So um, I uh, had a hat, a really big hat, sunglasses, sunscreen all over me. Um, but we were full in the sun, at least for the first part of our set. And uh, steel pans, they're sort of this shape. 
very reflective and it was like a little oven in there while I was playing like my hands were 10 degrees hotter than the rest of me um, but it was fun and we played and it was great and um, then we hung out with some friends for a while there while I was getting sicker and sicker and then we went home and I pretty much went to bed and got this terrible cold and um, I was sick, too sick to work on Monday or Tuesday so I stayed in bed those two days. Wednesday I went into work but I had a blocked ear feeling and um, my blocked ear got worse and worse and that night at about three o'clock in the morning I felt a pop and I felt a whoosh and my ear was bleeding and I felt I you know got a hanky and it was blood so that freaked me out because I knew that it would be my eardrum uh, popping because there's nothing else that could happen in there from a blocked ear so first thing Thursday I went to the doctor I couldn't work that morning I went to the doctor the doctor was very reassuring saying that it's not going to permanently damage my hearing or anything like that it's just um, a perforated eardrum and it heals itself but she said I'm not to let any moisture get into my ear and I'm not allowed to touch it and I have to have antibiotics so I started on these antibiotics I went to work on Thursday afternoon and I went uh, I didn't work Friday oh yes I did I did a bit of teaching on Friday to catch up uh, so I've been on these antibiotics since Thursday night uh, Thursday Friday Saturday and now it's Sunday and I'm starting to get some bad reactions from this drug I've got an amazing headache that started last night and it's not stopping I've had Panadol it's not going away and I have some other bad reactions that I won't go into because they're disgusting but reading on the internet everybody says you've got to keep up with your antibiotics you just got to treat the symptoms and keep taking the drug um, because otherwise you might get the infection back or or you know whatever okay. they always say you got to complete the course of antibiotics um, so that's the status with me right now <coughs> I still have um, cold symptoms I've got a runny nose I've got this massive headache and I've got a cough and my ear is still feeling a bit blocked um, so things aren't that good I don't know if I can work tomorrow if I'm feeling like this um, yeah um, not that good but over the past few days I have been enjoying watching the Great British Bake Off we downloaded a couple of series to watch while we're sick my husband's sick too I gave it to him of course um, although he's not as bad as me um, yet I don't think he will get as bad as me because he doesn't have ear problems like I always do um, yeah, we've been watching The Great British Bake Off, which is a lovely show. I really enjoy it. Um, lovely people, interesting food. It. Um, I'm not a baker. Um, I'm a sewer. I, I watch The Great British Sewing Bee instead of The Bake Off usually. But um, yeah, it's been really nice to sit and watch that while, while you're feeling poorly. Um, yeah, and I've been trying to sort of go for walks and stuff to get the coughing moving and everything instead of just stagnating and I want pneumonia so yeah things are, things are not good here um, but I have to keep reminding myself that they will end my antibiotic is causing me particular problems I think but and that's a 10 day course and this is day three so if I'm already feeling this sick I don't know how I'm gonna go in 10 days I might see if I can get a replacement antibiotic because this is just making me feel really sick um, yeah so I think that's basically it for this week 
I'm going to going to hopefully finish this in the next week or two um, and and the socks as well which will be excellent and uh, yeah that's pretty much it I hope you have a really nice week hope you're feeling better than I am and do lots of knitting and things that you like and check out the bake-off because it's lovely okay talk to you later bye <laughs>